Defeated former President Donald Trump cons his latest low-tooth count rally-goers with false claims of other presidents taking documents, but there's a big difference between a NARA facility and the pretend-to-work office at the Florida golf course where he crashes weddings for desperate attention between showing off letters from his pen pal Kim Jong-un and romantically burying his first ex-wife between the golf carts and a sand trap. He's the kindest, gentlest man. He listens. He's not a bully like they try to, you know, and he's mean, but he's absolutely, a, I mean, just look at his children. They don't smoke. They don't drink. President Trump, don't, I mean, he did something right. And I. They use donuts to hunt bears, swipe money from charities, have shady deal after shady deal, and they do party very hard and even own a winery. Eric's makeup lab explosion survivor wife posted her bizarre clip of her drinking Trump wine while their baby cries in the background. Amazing people. It's the party of family values. It is pouring MAGA tears. I have a laugh with Diaper Don crying about how other former presidents have handled documents and look into his Chinese restaurant, bowling alley, and car dealership claims. Plus, by popular demand, I have a hilarious new genuine page from Lauren Boebert's book. Check in with Marjorie Taylor Greene and Alex's wild thoughts on Kanye from the Dimfo Wars bunker, plus the latest and stupid from Dim Jr. and more. The love child of Sarah Palin's slow cousin and a wrestler tweeted, Happy Columbus Day. Thank God for the discovery of America, the greatest country to ever exist. To borrow a phrase from my friend Matt Gates, if this offends you, then be offended. Naturally, I replied, There is so much stupid to unpack here that it makes your three-word, two-words tweet almost seem half-decent. We get it. You have a thing for Gates because he's as equally ignorant as you and is as enthusiastic about getting with the underage as your dumb as opposed husband. Donald Trump is attempting to claim some sort of innocence by association, suggesting that several past presidents also took documents, and if you're a smooth-brainer at a rally, you may fall for his sound bites. but let's look at what he said and what the truth is. Barack Hussein Obama moved more than 20 truckloads, over 33 million pages of documents, both classified and unclassified, to a poorly built and totally unsafe former furniture store located in a rather bad neighborhood in Chicago, with no security, by the way. You ever notice that Trump always goes out of his way to say Obama's middle name? Hussein, Hussein, drive it into this crowd. His middle name is Hussein, Hussein. The National Archives and Records Administration quickly debunked his assertion, explaining it was NARA itself, not Obama, that took the documents to a NARA-managed facility in the Chicago area. USA! 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 It's just mental that these people are chanting USA for a guy who has a worse handle on top secret documents than an umbrella. Meanwhile, George H.W. Bush took millions of documents to a former bowling alley and a former Chinese restaurant where they combined them. So they're in a bowling alley slash Chinese restaurant. You can hit the lanes and have chow mein at the same time, and there are top secret documents everywhere. Hey, why no middle names for H.W. Bush there, Trump? NARA issued a statement that said they took Bush documents to a Texas facility that it managed that happened to have been a former bowling alley. Now, not the same one that Lauren Boebert's husband exposed himself to teenagers at. This bowling alley was professionally remodeled and specially renovated to house the documents. I would totally be down with Chinese food and bowling. This sounds great. Bring that back and I'll be there. If people can't handle, like, maybe stealing secret documents like that, like, I don't know. Can they handle blasting lines off a bar like me? I'm insane. It's good to see guys like Kanye making sense all the time. Like, like, it's not like, oh, we're going to sell these documents to foreign countries and not get away with it. No, 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 no. Just like we were really broke, you know. So MAGA donations, charity money. We must be turds that are numbskulls.
in grifters. Bill Clinton took millions of documents from the White House to a former car dealership in Arkansas. What, 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 where's Bill's middle name? Nara took the documents to the former Balk Motor Company building in Little Rock, Arkansas, which Nara leased and managed. George W. Bush stored 68 million pages in a warehouse in Texas. What's the W for? That warehouse in Louisville, Texas was a Nara managed facility used while Bush's permanent library was being readied in nearby Dallas. A Chinese restaurant in a bowling alley with no security and a broken front door. All such temporary facilities met strict archival and security standards and have been managed and staffed exclusively by NARA employees with a dedicated vault area for classified documents. Your stuff was at a golf course, dude, just sitting around. Alex here, still in the bunker with Marjorie again, good dude. Our cause is getting support from a famous rapper who is now stepping it up as another voice for the wonderful far-right people with these incredibly beautiful new white t-shirts and statements about the space laser operators. Like, I thought all we had in common was that we both peddle garbage products to morons. Seriously, those Yeezy shoes are as functional as the brain farce pills that I sell. And again, just expired Kirkland signature vitamins that I gave a super cool name and repackaged. <laughs> now, I gotta be honest with you folks. I removed the lunch break zip ties and discussed it with the blonde meat swamp. And it is best that Kanye brings his incredible gut instinct and connection to God to our Dimfo Wars bunker for some chats about the globalists trying to ruin our flat earth with their Soros Trudeau Panda Express agenda. Kanye, if you're watching this, we know you were cool with marrying someone with a pound town tape of her and another fella, so I'm hoping, Mr. West, you will join me and my good dude here for a little more than a chat after the mics turn off. You know what I'm talking about, Kanye. Or is it just yay or ye? Is it ye? Are we talking yeehaw? Well, if yeehaw does join us for some post-show festivities, you must be extremely careful. Because if we get a peephole glimpse of those mortadella meat stumps with sarlacc pit heels that look like they were Cotton Don Jr.'s expired donut-baited bear trap with dive bar peanut toes wiggling from the skin of a teenage Klingon runaway living on five-finger discount dollar store chocolate and the cheese curds he stole from Ted Cruz, then you will incinerate all genius from me and... Yeehaw. What is the rule? The socks stay on. The socks stay on. For those new to the show, I'm glad you found me. Thank you. For months, I've been reading a genuine page each week from Lauren Boebert's book. Today, we continue from where we left off as Lauren and her husband continue their elaborate plan to steal buns for their food stall. Let's get back to it. Jason, with the Y, was still boiling the bubbly plastic tub of china kibble and I did not have time for this. Let's go, I shouted, but he was too involved with the blowtorch, and playing with fire is up there with chasing squirrels with hammers, chatting with teens, and getting day drunk for favorite things to do, especially at food courts and the playgrounds. Then I realized it wasn't just his flaming toy. It was my disguise. He couldn't see me. I took the glasses off, and he stopped right away and let me know. Hey, Broad, we have a side now. Sliders with rice it is. Of all the things that turn me on, it is Jason's ability to think real good. I looked at that container of blue jeans, tinted rices, and knew I had to give him some me too time. He ordered the glasses back on and followed me in the house where we ripped a Trojan off an old Christmas card and did married stuff on the futon next to our adopted pit bulls. We finished with some new ports to freshen our breath and calm the nerves. There was no going back. Jason felt the adult store costume glasses were amazing, but I needed something more. So he told me to do something different with your hair, Brodsky, while he looked around the house. I did need a different look, so I quickly rinsed out the rubber, making a clever tie for my new ponytail. You see, for all the heat I take, Boberts do our part for the planet. Jason returned with a little white bottle. I was always up for a shooter, especially before a road trip, but he stopped me before I could drink it. I got to admit, I was kind of mad at this party pooper, but he let me know it is not a beverage. It's called whiteout. <laughs> and I could use it <laughs> on my old corn cob looking teeth for extra disguising and undeniable beauty. It was awesome. 
I used the cute little brush to paint the kernels away one by one while enjoying the bonus fun from the wild smell. I held my mouth open two at a time wide style to dry them while Jason loaded the blue jeans rices in the truck. The drive across town was a breeze. Like it really was breezy since I had the window down, head out, mouth open to make sure the whiteout would stick to the corn kernels. Jason with the Y tucked the F-150 in a quiet corner of the McDonald's parking lot. This was my old spot where I'd talk guns and make out with the Vietnam veterinarians on my smoke breaks. Text me when you're ready for backdoor action, Jason said. I blew him a French kiss while I made my way into the Golden Arches. I knew that the combo of my drive through renaissance mission, my year working at this location, Jason's ex-girlfriend's adult video store costume glasses, my stunning DIY dental work, and my face-changing fashionable Trojan ponytail was all going to add up to a successful mission. It was like a fairy tale. I hope you've enjoyed this genuine page from Low Rent Boozbert's latest book. Uh, if you have, please let me know in the comments, and uh, I'll consider reading another page in the near future. Thank you. Thanks so much for voting. The Choose Your Fighter runner-up is Catch of the Day. And in first place, the fighter you have chosen is Socialism Sucks Guy. Lindell could buy and sell you 10 times before breakfast. Magateers. Got to the hospital and tell them you need your head checked for liberalism. <laughs> Magateers. My cousin is a dem sent this to me and I will probably punch him at the next family reunion. Magateers. More lamestream trash. No thanks ever. Magateers. Thanks so much for watching. Help me out by sharing this video or posting it on your social media. It'll cost you nothing and makes a huge difference for me. If you can afford to, please hit the super thanks button or tip me via PayPal and be sure to check out my mugs and stickers that go great with those magateers. I am a stand-up comedian. I've played in 35 countries. I've supported Jim Jeffries on five of his tours. I have three albums on Spotify and Apple Music. Be sure to check them out. Life short. Be cool. Be kind. Take care.